Hey guys, welcome to this episode of Creative Otter Production. Uh, where I teach, they had an ARP 2600 in the closet and it wasn't working and I was told it's getting repaired this summer. So in anticipation for that, I've been working with Arturia's ARP 2600, trying to wrap my brain around it. Um, I had certain goals set out, certainly general orientation, getting my getting it figured out, um, but also wanted to figure out how to use the sequencer and how I could use the sample and hold. And finally, I wanted to figure out how to use external audio. Uh, say you recorded a vocal track and you wanted to run it through modules, I wanted to see how to do that. So, um, okay, I'll, I'll leave in the show notes where you can find each of those things. But um, a couple things to be aware of. There are different skins that you can choose on the upper right here. I like this one. Uh, it looks like what we have at campus. It's also polyphony mode. Um, be aware of that. And I encourage you to save and initialize patch. If, if you kind of a square one sort of a place for you to save if you want to start building patches. Um, <clears throat> so this is a semi-modular um, synth. That means that stuff is already connected and flowing from left to right and it tells you here what is plugged in by by default when I pull up this fader it tells you what it's pulling up um, so this area is kind of your your mixer this this is kind of your mixer this is kind of your master area if you're not getting sound I would check these places especially this sneaky little guy um, so as I play a keyboard should be hearing I don't hear what you hear so so, yeah, okay, so <clears throat> as I pull these up, you should hear the different oscillators. So I'm pulling up oscillator 1, 2, and 3. You can mix them to your liking, tune them to your liking. If you don't like the default waveforms, VCO1, if you want that to be a saw wave instead, you just simply patch the saw out into there, then you have a sawtooth. Uh, oop, this was a low frequency. Just set those how you want. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, maybe I'll hear it. Oh, okay, so what's going on? There's some sound. <clears throat> if you experience sustained notes, sometimes it is notes from the sequencer that have been left on. And the only way I found to turn it on and off is with this guy. So that's kind of master fader. Um, all right, so let's talk about using the sequencer. Now, see this fader on the left of each oscillator? It says keyboard control voltage. So if you put this all the way at the top, it by default is going to let your MIDI keyboard play these notes. If you have it all the way down, it's going to be a, a constant note. Uh, wherever you have the pitch dialed in with this, every time you hit the keyboard, it's going to play this pitch instead of the note on your keyboard. Uh, it's going to say it's going to be devoted to this. And somewhere in between, I can't quite wrap my brain around that. Maybe I'll split the difference between the note you're playing and then the, um, the note that's dialed in here. Um, so <clears throat> what you want to do for the sequencer is instead you want to <clears throat> break this normal. Instead of letting your keyboard play it, you want the sequencer to play it. So let's take the output of this and send it to about all of our oscillators. Then you would put these notes where you want them. Um, I already have a sequence, come to think of it. Let's do this one. So essentially the same thing. I, I, I changed some of the waveforms. And let's just take a listen. You can control the filter cutoff with this side. If you split it, 
instead of a 16 step sequencer you change it to two 8 step sequencers and this one you can route to control things so we took the output of this and we put it into the ADSR here and that's going to modulate this according to this map so here's what it sounds like without it Oops, I keep on hitting the space bar here's what it sounds like with this filter modulation which I think is pretty cool um, alright what about external audio so pulse okay so this is where you would pull it in um, <clears throat> let's backtrack a little bit first we need a track with audio on it and then you would insert this as a plug-in. If you do not find, if you do not find Archuria, then this ARP 2600 as an effect, um, try changing it to a mono track. I want to say if this is stereo, it might not work. Now that, it, wow, I put it in stereo and other things come available too. So it looks like the 2600 is available both as mono and stereo. And then some of the other Archerias are available only as stereo. All right, well, let's, uh, let's open it up. Yeah, so this is where the sound comes in. It's labeled as preamp, and I find that very inconsistent with the way they label it in the other plugins. But nonetheless, preamplifiers is where the sound comes in from your uh, DAW, from your software. And I've got it patched in here to bypass um, VCO1 coming in. So this is where the sound comes into our mixer. And then, uh, I haven't talked about the sample and hold. I want to show that too. That There are not many videos out there about that. Um, well, I can just pull it down for now. This is a, instead of this is a modulator, and we can pull down the ADSR as well. So we can just hit play, and then we'll pull in the two effects. This ADSR is the thing you heard before. Instead of it modulating a synth, it's going to modulate the different sound sources. And I just took different clips. I took a vocal, a drum beat, a synth, and we're going to run that through all this. So I'll just leave it playing, and I'll I'll pull in the different effects. Then we'll talk about sample and hold. I think I have to start this. Okay, uh, hopefully what you're hearing was, was interesting. A sample and hold, let's, um, where is, let's go back to my template. Simple and hold, yes, yeah, so I, I just made the most basic sample and hold thing I could think of nearly. Um, so the sample and hold, And it, it it does what it says. It's it takes samples of frequencies. Oh boy, how to explain this concisely? You might be familiar with effects that involve both a, a carrier and a modulator, and this is one of those effects where our carrier sound in this case is VCO three a sine wave, and then our modulator. Let's see. Isn't that a little, do, 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 do. VCO3, our modulator is a sine wave as well. So <clears throat> instead of us hearing a, con if I play a middle C on this keyboard, instead of us hearing it as a solid C, we would expect this uh, LFO to slowly modulate it um, and to kind of make it wow instead of just sitting still. What this is going to do is, at given intervals, the sample and hold is going to take a snapshot of where that 
oscillating low frequency is and it's going to make it hold it. So it's almost a stair step sort of a sound that we're going to end up with. And that the speed of those stair steps is, is going to be dependent here on our rate, the rate of our sample. So let's see what we get here. Let's hold a note. Uh, let me see if we're making sound. Oh boy. You know what? I need to be on this one. Sorry, pull up our simple and hold here. Yeah, so just mess around the different settings until you get the end result you want. A common way to use the sample and hold is to use uh, a noise generator. <clears throat> and you can see even the default input is noise generator. And here's another complaint. This is not labeled input, but that's what this is. Sample and hold input is what this should say right there. Uh, they were probably true to what the ARP 2600 had on it, but this is the input. So you could patch the output into the input, but you, you that would be duplicitous. It would be doing the same thing that it's already in place. Um, so you would choose a level and choose a general frequency for this, this noise. And then you should be off to the races. Get rid of the sine wave, let's make it <clears throat> the default. All right, so I hope that's interesting and helpful. If you're not hearing that, it might be this. Again, I, my screen capture software doesn't let me hear things, so I kind of have to. Uh, turn knobs by faith, but I, I hope this was helpful in helping you get things figured out, how to do um, things like the sequencer, sample and hold, and um, external audio. Hope it was helpful. All right, guys, we'll talk to you later.